These are the Black Hills of Dakota. The Sioux Indian named this land. It is their word for friendly. There are seven warrior tribes in the Sioux Nation. And I have prayed that Dakota and its hills would be too rough for the white man and his flock. But once again, the white man comes. I watch their coming with a sad heart. There are few now, but I know that many will come for they seek the white man's treasure, gold. I am Sitting Bull, the leader of the Sioux Nation. My people are spread to the far corners of our land. This is Crazy Horse, my warrior chief. And these are some of my people. See, Crazy Horse, the wagons come without scouts ahead. These men come to our land as if they owned it. They're like white man's cattle, full bellies, stupid and slow. But there is food in the wagon. This our people need more than they need fresh scouts. children need for the journey to the Rosebud. Save our fighting braves for the real wars. When the deer run, does the wolf pack hide? Wise leader eats when he can. He builds strength for the day when he must fight. Live. Get out there and our wagon. Attack them. What are you waiting for? Are you the leader of these haybinders? We're honest prospectors. What are you doing in Indian territory? Minding our own business. You left the fort, you were told to go either east or south. So we took the wrong road. Now you're gonna chase them Indians or aren't you? It was a rig for food, Major. There's Sioux. All right. You men follow us back to the fort. What the hell? Are you gonna let them go? Yes. I'll drive a hard case against you, soldier. And I'll drive my fist down your throat if you open your mouth again. Get back to the end of the column. Hurry up! Keep those scissor pills and our dust all the way back to the fort.
I'll speak to your general about this. Go ahead. Bob, in trouble again? Me? <laughs> what gives you that idea? How many men did you lose? None. Two wounded. We lost all our supplies, Colonel Custer. Major Parrish reporting, sir. I'll talk to you later on, Mr. O'Connor. Just so you talk to him first. Well, Major? That man and his bunch were in Sioux territory. My orders were to ride patrol for just such a violation of the Indian Treaty. An officer, Major, is supposed to be able to exercise a certain amount of initiative. As a member of my regiment, I issued you your orders. I did not set them in concrete, and my head isn't set in concrete either. For the sake of a bunch of ragtail prospectors who could have ridden the whole command into an ambush. Give me the full report, Major. Those people use this fort to buy their supplies in. Then they line their teeth about where they're going. They go into Sioux territory and slaughter their game, foul their water, and shoot every Indian they see, if he's old or harmless enough, in the trees. They don't mean anything to them. They're just words on paper. Admitting every word of that to be true, it's outside your province as a soldier. We are all here to obey orders. And orders seem to be something that's a stumbling block for you. Major, you've been a burr under my saddle ever since you came west. You were an aide to General Grant when I first knew you, a colonel. Now you seem to be traveling downwards in rank. Well, we seem to be traveling the same direction, Colonel Custer. You used to be a general. Gentlemen, that's enough. Colonel Custer has suggested an assignment for you, Major. You're going back where Sioux Raiders aren't likely to bother you. The assignment is the Red Rock Agency. Red Rock. Period of duty is one year. Refuse the assignment, and I suggest you turn in your resignation. You'll pull out tomorrow, Major. We lead the troop at the agency, police the Indians there. Any questions? No, sir. And thank you, sir. Year out of circulation will do him good. If anything, will, sir. Oh, excuse me, Colonel. I want to have a little talk with Cappy before he comes over to see you. Maybe you'd better, sir. If she makes him your son-in-law, I don't envy either of I was listening. I heard what you had to say to Colonel Custer. Uh, go ahead and say it. I failed you again. It's not me you failed, Bob. It's yourself. Look, I know Red Rock isn't exactly what I had planned for our... There'll audience. be no honeymoon, Bob. Our engagement is finished. Well, good. Good. I don't like long engagements either. When do we get married? We're not getting married. I've made up my mind. We're through. Kathy, you're just upset. I'm not upset. And I want you to listen to me. The man I marry has to do more than just love me. He has to place our future together, our happiness, above everything else. All I need is a chance. Chance? You've had a thousand chances. Well, you could be commanding a regiment right now. Is it discipline that galls you? Is it lack of action? What? Maybe I've got a few plans that don't suit these blue-bellied patriots who like to go around slaughtering Indians just to keep the name in print. This Indian thing has become an obsession with you. Why don't you have Washington handle it? Or quit the army altogether? Quit? And then what? Anything. Dig ditches if you like. <laughs> yes, I dig them with you. So long as you dug the best and the straightest. Oh, Bob, I, I shall be get a start anywhere on Earth. But you've got to want to... Fight your way to the top, to be the best in anything you tackle. It's got to be the best, huh? The man I marry? Yes. And you wouldn't marry me if I was just a rear trooper in the ranks. I'd marry you whatever you were, if that's where you were starting out. A woman wants to be proud of her husband. Where you've been going, why, I'd be a barracks hag all my life. A quick widow.
Here's your ring, Bob. If you ever give one to another woman, put her in your future first in your mind. I had an idea that a girl like you could stand in an Indian agency for a year. You could still be in the Army. Yes. Yeah, I'd still be in the Army. Goodbye, Bob. You said it all right then. Fave. We're your friends. We're trying to help you. Where are you from? Agency. Red Rock? Talk to him. Waste la cola. Shokshe. Yo tonke ta tonke. Salte te huxedant. To tonka yo tonka. Young Buffalo, son of Sitting Bull. Sitting Bull? Better you let him go, Major. Here. Go your way. Let's go find that agency. like dogs. These people have not lifted a weapon against any man. White agent, order the soldiers to herd them southward, to the swamps. Our people would not go. For this, they are punished and starved. And still you won't make war. I will send them word they're not forgotten. And I will pray to the Great Spirit. Give me a day to rest. I will go back. No. Not your own son, Sitting Bull. Send another. You have suffered enough. It will be the best proof that my father would not forget them. I will go back. Tell them this. 
I will try to make peace with the white man. If that fails, then they will hear our war cries and the shouts of fighting braves. But first, I must call all the chiefs to council. The horns, huh? What are you running here, Captain? A flop house or an army post? This is Red Rock Agency, sir. The good Lord's gift to the Indian. What's that over there? The stockade. The wind's right about now. Can't you smell it? I want to see it. You better have a drink for it. They wanted their own home. Well, that's an odd thing for people to want. Weber's been trying to starve them into obedience. Major Parrish reporting, sir. Relief Captain Swain. I am busy, Major. Please wait. All I want to know is to release food, blankets, and medicine. That I am. Did they send you without your regular military supplies? My supplies are intact, sir. I want it to spread around the Indians out there. Spread around the Indians? All you can spare. You are here to police this agency, Major, and not to run it. But those Indians are dying like dogs. They have refused to obey my orders. Get your troops settled, Major. There will be plenty of time to discuss these matters in the next 12 months. What about That's all, supplies? Major.
back to share your troubles until my father can send help. You have come only to share death with us. Tomorrow we try to go from here. Better to die in the open, fighting, than rot like sick dogs in a pen. But the long nights, the soldiers. Some will get through. My father is holding counsel. His advice is to wait. We have waited too long now. You see, we are ready. Go back to your father, young buffalo. Some of your braves could escape as I did and join my father. Will not leave women and children. And the old and weak of this misery. I will help you make the fire. Alabasters, forward! Ho! I'm glad to see Swain go. Why? Morale was getting low with his troops. Boredom, no doubt. Give your men exercise, encourage sports. I'll run the military end of it, Mr. Weber. You stick to your business. I was a military man when you were a pup, Major Parrish, in an army where discipline came first, a European army. I thought so. Your orders will be posted at 9 o'clock every morning. What time do you feed those Indians? Once a day, at sunset. Any other questions? No. Hey. Yes, sir. What is that? Dingin' feet, sir. Sick in a hog. For a fact, it would. Taste that. Take it away. Do you expect those Indians out there to eat that? Those Indians are being disciplined. They refuse to march the railhead for shipment of butter. The government's paying good money for food, blankets, and medicine. Where's it going? I am in charge of this agency, and I'm responsible to the Bureau and not to the Army Major. Taste it. If this is a joke... I'm not trying to be funny. Taste it. I'll have you die. Taste it. Major, the prisoners are breaking up.
got these. A gal like me can stand in an Indian agency for a year. At least he said so. Well, but what, what is all this? What happened here? You'll know soon enough, I'm afraid. Last night, Parrish, I sent a telegraph from the railhead. The reply from Washington has just come back. Instructions to place you under arrest for court martial. Sergeant, take charge of your prisoner. Miss Howell is a general's daughter, Mr. Weber. The words court martial should be mentioned only in a whisper. Would you explain this to me, Mr. Weber? He came here and openly insulted me. I had Indian prisoners, dangerous renegades under discipline. He went among them, stirred them up into an outbreak, and finally refused to allow his troops to stop the escape. So we talked about it. Heard his version of it. Now listen to mine. I don't need to hear it. Mr. Weber, will you tell the escort we're returning to the fort? The station. Immediately. Sorry, sir. not big enough for all people. Guide me now, O oh God of my people. War or peace. War or peace. We can have war or peace out there, Mr. President. It'll depend on how we treat the Indians. You were called here to explain your conduct at the Red Rock Agency. Nothing more, Parrish. All I did was try to prevent a slaughter. The tribunal thought enough of that defense to recommend a dishonorable discharge. Well, why didn't the tribunal try Weber? Because the Bureau got rid of Weber. And don't yell at me. I'm sorry, sir. All I have to do now is sign this discharge. Then you can go up and down the land spouting your ideas. Being a civilian, you'll be under no army discipline. And discipline seems to be the thorn in your side. Sit down. You had a brilliant military career ahead of you, Parrish. Youngest colonel in my command. Medal of Honor and well-earned. Out west, I thought you'd go to the top. Just what are you trying to do? Get yourself demoted all the way down? May I speak freely, sir? Go ahead. You don't settle Indian troubles by shooting Sitting Bull's son in the back. I know that. I suppose you have a plan to make the Indian grow flowers around his teepee. We're dealing with the whole Sioux Nation. For a thousand years, these people have roamed this country from Oklahoma to Canada, from Minnesota to the Tetons. 10,000 braves, seven nations. They're a proud people. They'd be fighting us now with every drop of blood that was in them, but for one thing, 
What's that? Sitting Bull, their spiritual leader. And a man that they look up to even more than Crazy Horse and the fighting chiefs. Sitting Bull alone is holding these people in check. Why? Maybe it's because he knows that the next war will be the end of these people. Mr. President, bring Sitting Bull here to Washington. Treat him with the dignity and the respect that he deserves. And prove to him that our treaties mean something. That they're not just words on paper. Do you think you could get Sitting Bull to come here to a council? I can try. That is, if my hide's not hung on a fence by my superior officers the minute I set foot in Dakota. Chinese friends would call that a chop G. What do your Indians call it? Medicine, sir. He big medicine. Well, that will get you over the top of army orders, Captain. Captain. In the interest of army discipline, I'm reducing your rank. Very good. Your trouble in the Sioux territory so far has been a tea party. But now there's something else waiting there for you. What's that, sir? A rush in the Black Hills. They've discovered gold. Gold? You'd better arrange that meeting with Setting Bull. No! 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 Imagine a dirty red skin trying to steal our claim. What do we do with him? Give her a shovel, let her bury him. And now another kind comes. This one wants gold. He is worse than the long knives and the blue coat. This one brings his women. He shoots without orders from his chiefs. He kills game he cannot eat. He fouls the clear water. He has come to stay. Drive him out! While well, there's still game, drive them back! Why is it you are sitting, Bull? Put on the war paint. Yes, we will. Well, we're we're all all Speak, sitting, Bull. Give us counsel. When a man throws his arrow at an enemy, he must shoot. When I dip my fingers in the war paint, it will mean war. But this I counsel you. Gather all the nations together before you draw the first arrow. It will seem easy to drive back the men who want the yellow stone. But if we fight them, we must fight the long nights, the soldiers. So this I counsel you. Send runners to all the nations of the Sioux, to the Cheyenne, to the Crow, who have been our enemies. Send runners to all our cousins. Send them now, crazy horse. Gather all our armies. We will make sure our boys strong before we fit the arrow.
Didn't expect to see you here. You're disappointed? And the captain, too, did you notice? Yes, we heard about it. What's all this? County fair? Minor. There's quite an army he's captured. There. Good. Yes. Can we go away somewhere where we can? Bob. There's someone I'd like you to Hi, honey. Wasn't even worth the ride. Just a few miserable prisoners. Major. Oh, I'm sorry. Captain Parrish. I'd like to present my fiance. Charles Wentworth. You're Charles Wentworth, the war correspondent? That's right. I've heard a great deal about you, sir. I guess everyone has. So you're starting at the top again. Could uh, you let me in on that? It's a private joke. Are you looking for a war out here, Mr. Wentworth? My paper thinks the West is a tinderbox. Maybe I can cheat you out of a war. See how good you are at another contest. Credentials. Chakti is a Chinese word for it. Big passport to anywhere. I will carry you straight to a scalping knife. Why do you want those prisoners? To get me through the scalping knives. The sitting bulls can't. You picked yourself a nice, soft assignment. I'll be leaving right after dark, sir. The least I can say to you is good luck. Thank you very much, sir.
It might remind you. Remind me? Remind me of dust, sweat, horse lines, barracks? Yes, all of that. And it might remind you of a man who once loved you. Charlie's in love with me. And he can give you the parties and the theaters and the clothes, is that it? Yes. Yes, that's part of it. Well, can he give you this? Maybe so, Captain. Maybe so. We, uh, we rode up here yesterday. Something special about the scenery, Kathy? The sunset. It's always so beautiful from here. Not wondering about someone out there in the big empty spaces, are you? You hear from your newspaper? Yes, three or four days ago. I'm relieved of this assignment. At my own discretion. Three or four days ago? Why didn't you tell me? Oh, I was sort of waiting development. But what are you waiting for, Charlie? Why can't we go back east at once? Well, there might be some news breaking here yet. News? Is news more important than our marriage? You know it isn't. Parish might be back any day. Oh? I still think there's news in here. Forget Bob Parrish. I could forget him very easily, Kathy. Fight me the Indian way. 
this is right. Let it be then, the Indian way. I have wanted peace. I pray for peace. There have been battles. But when the white soldiers win a battle, they call it victory. When the Indians win, they call it massacre. Great chief. Will you listen to the words of my chief? Speak. Move your braves across the little river. My chief, too, has many soldiers. They will come and they'll stop on their side. But neither army must strike a blow. Now you come to the great white chief of the big council. I will say yes to this meeting. What is your plan, Sitting Bull? My braves will hold their arrows, but your chief must come here. He will meet me between the two armies in the open country. You mean bring the president here? If this meeting fails, then both armies will come together. The chiefs in the middle will die first. This is the Indian way. My chief has many days. I traveled. will give him time. Many braves are here now. More are coming. I will hold them until the full moon. I can't promise the president will come here, Sitting Bull. Yankee West, the Mississippi's moved out of here. Sergeant! Yes, sir. 
see that these horses are walked and fed. Then you get some meat. I'll see you in a minute. It doesn't make sense. What Sitting Bull wants, I couldn't change his mind. You can't ask the President of the United States to come out here and sit under a tree with an Indian. Grant's a soldier. He'll understand. Can you send a message to him right away, sir? Good night. Of course. It's almost hopeless. Maybe. But it could save us a war. All right. I'll have it sent. You get some rest. Thank you, sir. Hey, Captain. Hi. Glad to see you back. Your fiance doesn't look any too pleased. Any news? Will war be declared? Declared? It's already on. Charlie's talking to you as a newspaper correspondent. Uh, you look as if it's been kind of tough going. Three days and nights in the saddle might be tough on a reporter. Here in the Army, it's just routine. Charlie's no stranger to a uniform. He was a major in the last war. A major? What do you know about that? Without rank again. <laughs> you know, under other circumstances, I could like him. given the word. The moon is not full. The white man is not watching that moon. He is ready to move. The golden miners more and more come closer. Give me the word to move against these miners. One spark will start the prairie burning. Spark! I will throw a thousand torches. When the time is right, I will light your torches. Getting banjo out watching that moon, Captain. Well, I was a fool to ever think Grant would leave Washington to come out here. Looks like we missed, Sam. That dance they're having might be fun, Captain. Yeah. Might be. Sam. No sense riding a dead horse any longer. You've been a good friend. If you want to put a feather in your hair, go back and join your Indian friends. It's all right. I'll understand. You can leave tonight. I guess I got some of that horse blood you was talking about, Captain. <laughs> you mean you're not giving up? Good.
forgive me, Captain, but what about you? You gonna give up on her? She's everywhere you turn. What do you want me to do? I want you to take me away from here. Are you sure that's what you want? I know what you're thinking, Charlie. I want to marry you. But if you don't take me away from here, I'll, I'll go alone. We'll leave together. Be ready to summon. You're a strange man, Captain. You fight crazy horse. You couldn't have thick of engine there. You got no fear in you. But you scared to walk up to one squaw, grab her by the hair and say, come to my tent. Hi, Parrish. Glad I ran into you. Quite a detour you made. Well, I just wanted to say goodbye. I'm leaving for the railhead at daylight with Kathy. What am I supposed to do? Wish you good luck? Well, that's the usual thing. Good luck. You'll find us. As easy as find a herd of buffalo.
expect you. We're well, really leaving. Yep. Let's say the uh, second best man is one. I thought you newspaper men lived by a code. Code of honor? You got that wrong. But if you think I've taken dishonorable advantage of you over Kathy, we can settle that one, too. Let's skip that. There's something else I had in mind. What about a newspaper man never running out on a story? What story? The biggest story you've ever had a chance to cover. Are you serious? President Grant's coming out here. Grant? To sit under a tree and hold accounts for peace with sitting law. So that's it. You're forgetting, Parrish. I could telegraph that story in without interrupting a single plan for the way. Yes, you could. But that information's top military secret. Telegraph it and you'll see me put against a wall in front of a firing squad. Do what you think's best. Oh, great spirit, now I come to ask for strength. The war paint is ready. Give us strength and courage. If the battle must come, it will be the last fight. When ready. Very good, sir. Got up. Captain, the hatch is buried. Fine. But there's another kind of trouble out there, sir. I passed through the miners' camp. Dozens of them. All of them got guns. And they're all on the prod, looking for engines. What's that for, Captain? That's Custer calling for his officers.
now, you will proceed to the little bighorn. You'll hold at Medicine Creek. You should get a good view of the suit camp from that position. Very good, sir. Two orders were to hold here, sir. That'll be enough, Captain. Captain Benteen, you'll proceed as rear guard to Major Reno. All right, gentlemen, move out. Very good, sir. I'd advise you not to move so close, sir. Captain Parrish, did you read General Howell's orders? Yes, sir. And you know those orders transferred you back under my command. You also know more about these miners than anyone else. Before I'm giving you an order to clear them out of this immediate area, you'll be responsible for their safety. But my place is here. Captain, are you refusing an order? No, sir. just came up with a mail. It was a letter from Kathy. She asked me to give you this. Would you like to read it? No. Best man was winning all the time, Bob. I knew it. You thought I was a fool to leave her back there at the fort. But it wasn't me riding away from Kathy. It was you. Good luck. You know, gentlemen, I was just thinking. The Indians should attack. This is not a position I would choose to hold. As a civilian, Colonel Custer, might I have a word in this? Naturally. Captain Parrish was certain, sir, that the Indians had no plan to attack. Maybe not. I intend to swing off here. Major Reno will hold at the little bighorn. Captain Benteen will join him as planned. That force will be the anvil. We'll cut through the hills, hit the river well above Major Reno and his men. We'll be the hammer. The Indians will then be between us. If anything should go wrong, if they should attack, the hammer will strike the anvil and heaven help anything that's in between. But Parrish says there are thousands of Indians, sir. Many more than your scouts have reported. Mr. Wentworth, Captain Parrish is notorious for his overestimate of all facts. Gentlemen, mount your troops. The scouts will ride the ridges. We are moving forward.
come very close. Many horse soldiers. It's a plan. The great white chief is coming, but first he sends many braves and wise leaders. We are at peace. the general. What's in those barrels? Engine bait, Captain. Engine bait. Bring them up. Wait a minute, fella. If anybody interferes, I'll break a few heads. The word has been given. We wait for the chief. Yellow hair scouts.
All right, let's go. Where are we here for, Captain? celebrate big wins, sir. They're celebrating the greatest disaster they'll ever see. General Terry's army's only a day's ride from here. General Terry, quick, dispatch. Sir. What is it? Sir, we beg to report Colonel Custer's troop completely wiped out. It was a massacre, sir. Our troop and Major Enos were completely cut to pieces. Where was it? When? Little Big Horn, sir. Late, yesterday. Order General Assembly. Take care of these men. General Assembly. We are strong here. Let them come again. The white man's army will run like antelope before us. I say, go out and find them. <laughs> May I have one word in this council? What is your wish, Sitting Bull? Hear what the split tongue has to say. Then let the young braves kill him. I have not spoken with the split tongue, Sitting Bull. The great white chief doesn't know this fight. Yellow hair advanced without orders. How am I to believe this? It is my word. I knew their plans. I saw their orders. Did I come here as a prisoner? Did I come here of my own free will? Speak. This victory today was nothing. When the sun rises tomorrow, you'll see an army ten times that size. Twenty times. There's a great general moving this way. 
To the south lies the hot, dead country. To the setting sun, the big mountain. To the rising sun, a long, nice town. Where would you have my people go? There's only one way to escape the army that's moving here. I will show you. No. You will lead us. If this is a trick, your death will not be swift. Many words of wisdom. You have kept your word. Then I'll say goodbye. You'd better stay with the people you know best. Is that an order, Cap? That's an order. You will go back to your own people now? Yes. No harm will come to you for what you have done? The great white chief will understand what I have done. Go then. I will never forget you, my son. I hope the man will remember Custer. Borgers! Yo! You're wounded. Let's hope for your sake it's affected your mind. Take charge of it. Place him under arrest. stop a massacre on, on both sides? My dear young lady, the court martial made the decision. I can do nothing but sign the death warrant. When will it happen? It's customary to allow a condemned man 48 hours to straighten out his affairs. I'm sorry. Shoot a miss. Sam, he wants you to go back to your own people before you get into trouble. You know what engines say now, miss. They say 
white man shoot only for an engine's got. How do you shoot Captain Parry Smith? Engines they cause white man hate engines. Also hate engines friend. Engine never make meeting with white man again. Sam. Sam, there is one man that could make that very plain. I mean, sitting bull. But we only got 48 hours, miss. Try, Sam. Oh, Sam. Robert Parrish, whereas you have been found guilty of the charge of treason and sentenced to be divested of rank and executed by firing squad with all ranks present Your daughter's with him. Open the gates. But, sir, they're... Carry out my orders. What is it? It's Sitting Bull, sir. Sitting Bull? It's all right. My daughter brought him here. He's 
Sitting Bull. This is my father, General Howe. Sir, may I present the President of the United States? Great White Chief, you promised the Council. Speak, Sitting Bull. For many years, I have tried to keep peace between us. A moon has not passed since many men, yours and mine, have shed their blood. For me, there is no joy in such a memory. Nor for me, Sitting Bull. That is good to hear. But then why are you now going to kill this man for treason? This man has always risked his life to bring peace between us. He risked his life when he led my people north so that there would be no more killings on both sides. For all time, the Indian will respect this man. When he left my side, I called him my son. I feared for his return. I remember his last words to me. The great white chief will understand what I have done, he said. Kill him, white chief, and your nation will destroy a patriotic son. Only to find their mistake too late. But let him live. And through him, the Indian and the white man can sit again in his council. Thank you. 